All right. Well, here we go. Let's press on, friends. We are continuing this morning in the book of Acts. Speaking of last week, if you were with us last week, you might, you might remember that in Acts chapter 19, several different factors all came together to form a perfect storm of what? Of chaos. Absolute chaos in the city of Ephesus. There was this crowd of thousands of people, maybe even tens of thousands of people. And this crowd turned chaotic and it was ugly. And a number of factors came together to create this perfect storm. What were those factors? Well, one of those factors was the emotions of the crowd. This crowd was angry, this crowd was offended. Scripture says that many in the crowd were confused and were not even sure why they were even there. And they were energized. For hour after hour after hour, they would shout to their goddess Artemis. This crowd was highly charged in their emotions. A second factor would be the reasons behind all of these emotions. There were economic reasons. There were religious reasons, and there were political reasons. Oh, friends, those three don't always play well together, do they? So this was a total scene of chaos in Acts chapter 19 in the city of Ephesus. This mob, this riot, this crowd that went into the theater, the outdoor theater, seating 24,000 people. It was so bad that Paul wasn't even allowed to go inside to try to calm the crowd down. It was that chaotic. It was that crazy. So how did all of this chaos end after hour and hours and hours of total mayhem? How did it end? Surprisingly, miraculously, amazingly, it ended with calm, not violence. It didn't spread. No one was harmed. No one was killed. It ended in perfect calm. God used an unnamed city clerk to speak to the crowd. And then when the clerk was done speaking, I love what verse 41 says. It says he dismissed the crowd peacefully, orderly, the Bible says nothing more about the chaos. It was amazing. God changed the chaos. My friends, the good news from last week is this. God can bring calm from chaos. God can bring calm from chaos. He did in Ephesus 2,000 years ago. And he absolutely can in your life today. Whatever chaos is going on in your world right now, God can bring calm to your heart. He can bring calm to your mind and to your spirit. And in his way and in his timing, God can even bring calm to the situations and circumstances swirling around you. My friends, always remember, never forget that God can bring calm from chaos. Well, that was last week. To get us started this week, I want to share with you uh, something that was kind of fun a few years ago. Back in 2013, the Atlanta Hawks basketball team, they had a contest for their fans. And the main prize of the contest was this. Two people could fly over to England to watch the Atlanta Hawks play basketball in a special series in London, England. So that is a cool contest and a very cool prize. Well, to promote this contest, they put together a series of videos where the Hawks players tried their very best to define some British words. Let's see how they did with their definitions. Take a look. It's time once again for British Border Dash, the game where Hawks players guess British slang. Collie wobbles definitely means some type of candy. Collie wobbles means probably a dance, actually. A little dance they do. 
Kali wobble is the gum that sticks on the bottom of your shoe and people pick it up and eat it. Kali wobbles is a dance that uh, they do in London. Um, when they're on the dance floor, they get down and Kali wobble. Kali wobbles is actually an upset stomach or feeling kind of nervous. Sometimes before big games, I get the Kali wobble. Gabi is a gigantic turkey. A gabi is, is what you put on over your coat so it doesn't get wet. Gabi means what's up. Gabi, um, it's guacamole in Britain. Gabi is a drink in um, the UK where they use a spritzer, lemonade, and ice cream. Oh, Gabi means garbage. Gabi means hello. Actually, Gabi is being a loud mouth. For example, Jeff T. Knacker means nasty. Knacker is another way to say pants in the UK. Knacker means do you want some food? Knacker is walking along the street and jaywalking. Knacker is what you yell out when you hit your tee shot in the woods. Knacker means being exhausted. For an example, after a long day of practice, I can be kind of knackered. Minted means you are icy. Minted means it's been perfected. That's easy. Minted is the flavored gum of five. Five flavored gum, my favorite gum. Minted is a leaf. Minted. Minted is what, in Britain, what they call stanky breath. Minted means to be wealthy. For an example, Donald Trump is very minted. Well, there you go. Hey, they didn't do too badly, did they? So uh, I hope none of you are knackered this morning, okay? I hope you're not knackered. That would be a bummer. So they did pretty well de uh, guessing some definitions of some British words. Well, this morning is all about a definition of one word. It's not a British word, it's a Greek word. That's our main focus this morning, is a definition of one word. What word is that? Well, in Acts chapter 20, Paul encouraged people. He encouraged people in Ephesus, in that, in that city after all the chaos. And then he traveled through the region of Macedonia, and he continued to encourage encourage people. You can probably guess the word because I'm saying it with enthusiasm. <laughs> the word is encourage. So here's where we're going this morning. What is the Greek word that we in English define as encourage? What is that Greek word? Now, before you reach over and turn off your computer <laughs> and go, I'm not here for a Greek lesson. Let me just assure you, my friends, we're going to spend only this much time uh, on the word, just a little bit. But the more we understand this one Greek word, the more we understand God. The better we understand this one Greek word, the better we understand one way how God cares for us. So that's why we're looking at one Greek word word this morning. What is the Greek word that in English we use encourage? That's where we're going. Let's pray and ask God to bless our time this morning. So Father, thank you again for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you especially for this one word this morning. And I pray that you would bless our understanding, that you would open our hearts and minds, that we would receive the encouragement that you have for us today. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, friends, before we take a look at that one word, I invite you to take your Bibles, please, and turn to the book of Acts. We're in chapter 20. How about that? We made it. We made it out of the teenage chapters, <laughs> and we're up to chapter 20. We're going to start at verse 1, and uh, if you are sitting in a windowsill right now, you might not want to sit there. You'll see what I mean in the scripture. Unfortunately, we don't have time to talk about that part, but it is interesting. So be warned. If you're sitting in a windowsill, be warned. You'll see what I mean. Here we go, Acts chapter 20, starting at verse 1. When the uproar had ended, 
That was the chaos in Ephesus. When that had ended, Paul sent for the disciples and, after encouraging them, said goodbye and set out for Macedonia. He traveled through that area, speaking many words of encouragement to the people, and he finally arrived in Greece, where he stayed three months. Because the Jews made a plot against him, just as he was about to sail for Syria, he decided to go back through Macedonia. He was accompanied by Sopater, son of Pyrrhus from Berea, Aristarchus and Secundus from Thessalonica, Gaius from Derby, Timothy also, and Tychicus. Oh, I practiced this. Oh, here we go. Um, to Chickas and Trophimus from the province of Asia. Oh, that's better. These men went on ahead, and they waited for us at Troas. But we sailed from Philippi after the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and five days later we joined the others at Troas, where we stayed seven days. On the first day of the week we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, he kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Seating in a window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man, and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. After talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. Now, do you see why you shouldn't sit in a windowsill during a worship service? So, unfortunately, don't have time to focus on that. But we are going to focus on this one Greek word. The word in English is encourage. Again, what is the Greek word that we define as encourage? Well, we see it in the scripture that I just read. Verse 1 says Paul was encouraging people in Ephesus in Macedonia. Verse 2, it says that Paul brought much encouragement to the people. And even in verse 12, it's the same Greek word. In English this time, we chose the word comforted. When this young man went home after he fell, he and his family were comforted. It's the exact same Greek word. So again, what is that Greek word? Well, Let's not waste any more time. The Greek word is paraclete. Paraclete. Okay, class, right now, everybody out loud, say the word paraclete. Okay, some of you didn't do it. I still love you. It's okay. Paraclete. Not to be confused with parakeet. Okay, that is completely different. I had to do that. A little Greek humor there. Okay, so paraclete. What does that word mean? The better we understand the word, the better we understand God and how he cares for us. Let's break it in half. The word para means alongside. Alongside. Ever hear of a para church ministry? That's a ministry that comes alongside of the church to serve its people and to support it, like Twin Pines, like Big Creek Missions, like Youth for Christ. They are all para-church ministries. They are alongside of the church. They don't replace the church, but they're alongside of it. That's what para in Greek means. It means alongside. Cleat in Greek means to call. To call. Or this morning we're going to tweak it just a little and say to come. To come. So paraclete, alongside to come. When we reverse that the way that we talk in English, encourage is the Greek word paraclete. What does that mean? It means to come alongside. To come alongside. Isn't that a neat picture? of what it means to encourage someone. You come alongside of them. That is paraclete. 
That is encourage. Let me share two examples to try to get this understanding in our minds even more clear of what paraclete really, really means. So here is our first example. And this is a true story. It happened back in the 90s. So back in the 90s, a sailboat got caught in a, in a storm. It was a violent storm. And as the waves grew and grew, the sailboat was in trouble. The waves rose higher and higher until a rogue wave swept over the sailboat, actually turning it upside down for a moment until the keel of the sailboat flipped it right side up. However, in that moment, it was badly damaged. And the people in the sailboat sent out a rescue signal. They sent out an SOS over the radio. Who responded to that SOS? A Coast Guard cutter. A Coast Guard cutter. It quickly responded to the call for help. But when this giant Coast Guard cutter found this little sailboat in the storm, the storm was still so violent that no one in the Coast Guard could do a rescue at that moment. The seas were too rough. So what did the Coast Guard cutter do? Well, this is what it did. It came up as close to the sailboat as possible. In the middle of the storm, going between the waves and the sailboat so that all the waves that were smashing in would smash into the Coast Guard cutter. It got as close as it could, and it took the brunt of the waves. When the storm was done, the Coast Guard cutter helped the people in the sailboat sail back into port safely. Friends, encourage. The word paraclete means to come alongside, right? To come alongside. That Coast Guard cutter encouraged the small sailboat. It literally came alongside of the sailboat to protect it and to bring hope and help and comfort to the crew of the sailboat. Did you see what I mean now? When I say the word encourage in Greek is paraclete. It means to come alongside. All right, if you're not into sailboats and and waves and the ocean, let's try another example of this word in action, okay? If you're a baseball fan, here you go. This one is for you. Back in 1947, Jackie Robinson was the first African-American baseball player to play in the professional leagues. He played for the Brooklyn Dodgers. That's right, young people, the Brooklyn Dodgers. Ask someone about that sometime. And uh, he was a pioneer. It was a huge deal that he played in a white man's sport at that time. Remember, Jackie Robinson's rookie year was 1947. That's what I mentioned. In 1947, Martin Luther King was still a junior in college. In 1947, President Harry Truman had not yet integrated the army. In 1947, the Supreme Court had not yet ruled that segregation was illegal. And in 1947, it would be eight long years until Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the bus. Jackie Robinson came before all of these. He was a pioneer. And because of that, he faced incredible rude behavior. He faced incredible obnoxious fans whenever he went and played baseball. One day, as they played an away game in Cincinnati, the Cincinnati crowd was especially bad, especially rude and obnoxious to Jackie when the Dodgers ran on the field in the first inning. The Dodgers captain was named Pee Wee Reese. Pee Wee Reese did something about this bad treatment that Jackie Robinson was experiencing. What did he do? 
Well, here is that moment of history as shown in the 2013 movie entitled 42. Take a look. Here we go. How many times do you think Pee Wee's going to score today? Well, I don't know, son. I remember when I was a kid, I saw Honus Wagner play. Scored three times that day. I'll just have to wait and see. Wow, that would be great. fans expressing their displeasure as the Dodgers take the field. Eric Robinson at first, Brad Eddie, Stanky at second, Buddy Jorgens in third, and the captain, Pee Wee Reese at short. Fans ask any man and they'll tell you the Gillette Super Speed Razor is our honey. Maybe the sweetest shaving razor you will ever use. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. Things say all they want. We're just here to play ball. It's just a bunch of crackpots still fighting the Civil War. Well, hell, we'd have won that son of a gun if the corn stalks would have held out. We just ran out of ammunition. Better look next time, Pee Wee. Ain't gonna be a next time, Jax. All we got's right here. Right now, you know what I mean? Thank you, Jax. What are you thanking me for? I got family out there from Louisville. I need them to know. I need them to know who I am. Hey, number one! You playing ball or socializing? Playing ball, huh? Play ball. Don't let get to you. Playing ball. Maybe tomorrow we'll all wear 42. That way they won't tell us apart. The English word encourage in Greek is paraclete. It means to come alongside. Pee Wee Reese left his position in shortstop. He ran over to first base. He put his arm around Jackie Robinson and he encouraged him. At that moment, Pee Wee Reese came alongside of Jackie Robinson. He came alongside of him to defend him, to support him, to counsel him, and to cheer him on. It was such an amazing moment that they made a statue about it. And that statue still stands in Brooklyn today. That statue commemorates an amazing moment. It was a moment when Pee Wee Reese came alongside of Jackie Robinson. Do you see what I mean now? With the word paraclete, alongside to come, to come alongside. Do you see how important that is? How powerful that is? How God can use a moment like that to change someone's day, maybe even to change someone's life. Friends, did you know that Jesus called someone the paraclete? Jesus himself used that word. He called someone the paraclete. He wasn't talking about any Coast Guard person. He wasn't talking about Pee Wee Reese. Who was Jesus talking about when he called someone the paraclete? Who was that person? In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, Jesus said these words, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another paraclete. The word in English is comforter in that spot. But the Greek word, paraclete. He will give you a paraclete who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit is paraclete. That's the exact word that Jesus used to describe the Holy Spirit. Paraclete, alongside, to come. Jesus is saying that the Holy Spirit comes alongside. That's what he does. That's what paraclete means. That's who the Holy Spirit is. So the good news this morning is simply this. The Holy Spirit comes alongside of you. Your paraclete, the Holy Spirit, comes alongside of you. Friends, that is good news. That is good news just like the Coast Guard cutter came alongside of the sailboat, the Holy Spirit comes alongside of you. Just like Pee Wee Reese came alongside of Jackie Robinson, the Holy Spirit comes alongside of you. Friends, praise the Lord that the Holy Spirit comes alongside of you. And when he does, the Holy Spirit comes alongside of you as your defender, as your comforter, as your helper, as your counselor, as your protector, as your encourager, and so much more. The Holy Spirit is the paraclete. The Holy Spirit comes alongside of you. Friends, that is the good news of this morning. I have a question for you. How has the Holy Spirit come alongside of you in your life? How has the Holy Spirit done that? How has the Holy Spirit defended you or comforted you? How has the Holy Spirit helped you or counseled you? How has the Holy Spirit protected or encouraged you? Take a moment and think of a time, whether it was a big event or a small event, whether it was recent or a little while ago. How has the Holy Spirit come alongside of you? I want to give you a chance to encourage your family as you talk about this question for a few minutes at home. I'll put the timer up on the screen. You'll have about four minutes or so to share as a family in closing before we sing a final song. How has the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, come alongside of you? Go ahead. Let's share together.
thank you for sharing at home and encouraging one another. Do you see now why I love this one Greek word so much and why I wanted to share this definition with you this morning? Again, the word is paraclete, paraclete. Jesus called the Holy Spirit paraclete. That means that the Holy Spirit comes alongside of you. Friends, whatever you are experiencing right now, whatever is going on in your life right now, the Holy Spirit comes alongside of you. He is your paraclete. He is your defender and comforter and helper and counselor and protector and encourager. Praise God. Praise God for the Holy Spirit who comes alongside of you. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will come alongside of each person worshiping with us now. That you, through your Holy Spirit, would come alongside of them in a very special way, even today, even this week. And that they would experience your presence. And that they would truly be encouraged. So God, come alongside of us. And we thank you for how you work and move in our lives. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.